All right, and now we transition to Matters Wildlife Census. Joining me to have that conversation is none other than the Cabinet Secretary for Tourism and Wildlife, Najib Balala. Happy to have you with us Thank in studio. Much. I see behind you there some zebra and uh, tour van. <laughs> so why is this important and now? Because the COVID-19 pandemic has given us a lot to deal with. So why is this an important thing to be occurring at this time? Well, first of all, it's important for us to have data and also to know the numbers. Uh, we always do uh, segmented data collection, elephants, rhinos, mainly the endangered species. This time we decided we want to have a holistic census of all animals because we hear that we have, we have, a dec uh, we have declined animals 70%, uh, we have more animals, so challenges. And during the pandemic also we had so many challenges in human wildlife conflict. So, we want to have the data so we can have proper, proper planning, but also mitigating the challenges. And that's exactly why we are doing this, uh, this census. But also, uh, we have now established a new organization called the Wildlife Research and Training Institute. And this is their core mandate. And this is their first activity uh, of, of them to collect data on wildlife. And they'll do research. And then also we want to separate between security and conservation, which is KWS, research and training with the Wildlife uh, Research and Training Institute, and then regulation or regulatory, which is done by the central government. So these are the responsibilities that we want to spread. We don't want to do everything with KWS because then the capacity will be limited. All right. So uh, for those who require a bit of context, this exercise was launched on the 7th of May at the Shimba Hills Reserve, which is the home of the sable antelope. And uh, as you mentioned previously, we've been carrying out uh, sensors for animals such as the elephant and the rhino. Mm. Uh, I'm curious, how would you conduct a census for aquatic animals and migratory animals? Because <laughs> that's part of what you're looking at now, right? No, we, we are doing census across the board uh, and we are working with multi-agencies. So our team is working with Kenya Fisheries, Kenya, uh, Kenya Maritime Authority, and they have a methodology that will be able to know how do you do marine uh, count, for example. The last marine count was done in 1997. So it's a long time since it has happened. So now they're going to do it. Uh, it again, it depends on the waves, on the weather. So it has more complication than the terrestrial uh, counting. At the moment, we are focusing on the terrestrial, and then they'll move to the, to the marine count. Tomorrow, I'm going to go to Amboseli, again, because it's a home of many elephants, and also most of the human-wildlife conflict is done in Kajiado. So I have to have first-hand information, particularly on meeting, mitigating human-wildlife conflict. Because my agenda, if we don't get the goodwill of the people, we will lose the con 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 conversation, conservation agenda. Uh, in, in the country. Mm. So we need to reach there, we need to understand what the challenges are, we need to know the actual numbers rather of estimation mm. so that we can be able to do better planning. So, so Amboseli is critical because it's one of the premier parks we have uh, this year. During the pandemic since 2020, we had on over 200 new baby elephants born and for the first time after 40 years we had twins being born. So, so these are the things that uh, is exciting us on Amboseli. And, and, and on the 12th of August this year, we are going to have an elephant naming ceremony in Amboseli at the same time. So Amboseli is very critical, the numbers are important, and we're also addressing the issue of human-wildlife conflict. All right, so the COVID-19 pandemic, if, if uh, nothing else that was positive came out of it, at least it gave the wildlife some room to breathe. But uh, the problem of human-wildlife conflict is not going away any time soon. The KWS told us they have about 10 billion in claims for lost life injury, personal injury, as well as uh, loss of property. Uh, they've paid out since uh, 2014, I think it was it's about 2 billion, 2 billion since that time. Yeah. So, and, and the human population is continuing to budge on. Uh, we are reopening. So once again, this is an issue that needs to be addressed. Um, well, how is well, your ministry the dealing with that? The most important thing is that the pandemic also has, is a wake-up call for us. The time to rethink. Uh, KWS used to earn a lot of re revenue from tourism. Uh, we used to receive about 4.2 billion Kenya shillings from tourism. Now we can hardly receive half a billion. Uh, our budget to run KWS is almost 7 billion Kenya shillings. Again, government is subsidizing, but how much can government subsidize? And that's why they say this is an opportunity to rethink. 
reimagine, re-engineer everything, remodel even the business uh, aspect of it. So what do we do in KWS? We need to remodel KWS. First, I believe in devolution. I believe let's address the issues of parks. Mm. Instead of us controlling Amboseli from Nairobi, can we empower the warden in Amboseli to address the issue of human wildlife conflict, address the issues of, of, for example, infrastructure, address the issue of, again, biodiversity. So you empower people on the ground to take responsibility. And that's something that we want to achieve. It's not easy because you know, KWS is a big, giant organization. It has 6,000 people working in KWS. Our budget wage bill is 5.3 billion. Now with no revenue, how do, we, how do you work it out? Mm -hmm. And that's why I brought the idea, probably let's think afresh about PPP. How do we come together, do a public-private partnership? I know a lot of people thought about privatization mm -hmm. or sell-off. Government cannot sell its natural assets. And we don't support privatization in wildlife, but we support partnerships. For example, we have parks in the, in, in the region, which is Akagera National Park in Kigali, in, in Rwanda, managed not by government, by a partnership. Uh, we have Ngurumeti National Park in Tanzania. It's not managed by Tanapa, it's managed by a foundation. But there is a benefit for the country, there's a benefit for conservation, there's a benefit for the government. So that is a win-win situation. So this is the model we want to think. How do we move forward? For example, even now, look at the improvement we have done in Nairobi National Park. It doesn't take you one hour just to walk in Nairobi National Park anymore. It's much easier, more seamless. How can we make the experience better? And you see animals before it's a problem. The roads were a problem. Uh, the facilities are a problem. Again, you, don't, you hardly see animals because the grass is too tall and the animals are running away from lions. And these are realities on the ground. Again, we have parks like the Chulu Hills have been invaded by squatters. How do we save our parks? Malkamari has been invaded by people. Again, Boni and Dodori mm. in Lamu has been invaded by criminal gangs. If we don't allow other people to come in and partner with us, the assets must remain with government. But we must come together and say, let's work together you can do the issue of businesses, building lodges and infrastructure. We do the issues of security and biodiversity conservation. Mm -hmm. So that is the model we are thinking. We still is on the concept stage. So we want to involve more people. We have our PPP unit at, OP, at uh, National Treasury, which has been established recently. There's a new act in place. So these are the positive things. We said we can't sit down and say, we used to run KWS since 1989. Do we run it the same way even now, mm -hmm. after the pandemic? For me, I think we need to be innovative. We need to be courageous enough and say, what is good for the survival of conservation in this country. Okay, so this is an exercise that has been undertaken at a cost of about 250 million shillings. Yes. Uh, Bio Ministry, the Ministry of Tourism and Wildlife, as well as the KWS, and you mentioned the Wildlife Research and Training Institute. Where do counties fall? Because even as you talk about this uh, private-public partnership, uh, we have counties saying that, fine, it's a national resource, right? It's a national government asset or Kenyan people asset, but it uh, falls within our county boundaries. Is there a way we can share the revenue? Of course, yes. Uh, there, are, there are reserves which are managed and owned by the county governments. Most of these reserves are not managed well, so we want to help. But also we want to introduce people who can help us and do the PPPs. Mm. Currently, I have, an, I have an offer from Charitingilu in Kitui. I have an offer from Lamu in terms of Dodori. But again, on our own, we can't do it because we are already stretched mm. in terms of capacity. How do we involve other people? But this is an opportunity. I believe if the people don't benefit, they will not be able to conserve it better. All right. Okay. And one final question before yes. I let you go. Uh, Brand Kenya Ambassador Nomi Campbell announced that uh, she has a baby girl. So do you have any best wishes for her? Well, of course. Last night I congratulated her and I sent her all best wishes. She mentioned to me when we met in, uh, in January 
and we're excited. And uh, I couldn't, we couldn't get a better person to be a brand ambassador for Kenya. And Naomi Campbell has done. And she's doing it from her heart. Mm -hmm. And she's doing it for free. So I want to say congratulations to her and her new gift of life. So it's exciting and definitely uh, it will be good news for all of us. All right. And, and I hope you send her Kenyan type. Kenyan representative uh, gift for her baby. For you her saw baby her, her, her dress, a Kenyan color dress. I did. That is I did. Indeed. Yes. Oh, that in, is in the Instagram patriotic. picture. Yes. yes, it is. All right. Thank you so very much thank for you. speaking to us uh, this you. afternoon on the Wildlife Census. It kicked off uh, on the 7th of May at the Shimba Hills Reserve. It uh, goes on until July, if I'm yes, not mistaken. End mis of July. End of July, if I'm not mistaken. So there you have it. That is why it is important, even as we deal with the economic ravages of COVID-19 and uh, the ravage to our health system. Thank you very much. Buenos dias.